fourth installment of the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide instructional video series. In the previous videos, we went over the workflow of the U-value calculations using an example building. For most details, including the thermal bridging impacts into overall thermal transmittance calculations are straightforward. However, sometimes characterizing certain assemblies require special attention, or even a modified approach for considering the impact of thermal bridges. In this video, we highlight these special considerations and procedures for U-value calculations. Plane of heat transfer. Many types of details, such as balconies, project out from the envelope. For these types of details, we want to make sure we get the right takeoff values. For the projected details, we want to only account for the area and lengths along the plane of heat transfer. This is the projected area across which the heat can flow in and out of the building. For a balcony detail, the clear field area over the balcony is just the projected area onto the envelope, not the entire surface area of the balcony. Similarly, for the linear transmittance, it's just the length where the balcony meets the wall assembly and not the outside perimeter of the balcony. Geometric Thermal Bridges For most assemblies and details that are along a straight section of the building, the plane of heat transfer is the same no matter where it's defined within the assembly. However, when assemblies meet at an angle, such as at a building corner or roof-to-wall interface, the interior plane, along the drywall, and the exterior plane, along the cladding, will differ. When that happens, the heat loss accounted for through the clear field assembly can be over or underestimated depending on the detail and which dimension is used. When this happens, the linear transmittance for these types of angled details can be used as a correction factor. The linear transmittance can be interior or exterior based. For instance, at an outside corner, the exterior length is longer than the interior length. If interior dimensions are used, the clear field area will account for the heat loss up to the corner, but not include any part of the corner. This results in a positive linear transmittance to account for the entire heat flow from the corner. If the exterior dimension is used, then the area of the clear field overlaps over the corner, resulting in a larger clear field heat flow in calculations. In this case, the corner linear transmittance doesn't need to include as much additional heat flow and would be lower. In some cases, it can even be negative if the corner detailing is really good. For most buildings without many geometric thermal bridges, the impact of exterior versus interior is minor and just a simple accounting procedure. As long as the interior takeoffs are used with interior transmittances and exterior with exterior, the net amount of heat flow is still the same. In the BETB guide, all the linear transmittances for corner or wall-to-roof interface details are based on interior dimensions. That way, the results will be slightly more conservative if mismatched in the takeoffs. Assigning thermal bridging at transitions. The envelope can be split into any number of U-value areas, such as by wall type or elevation. When there is a linear transmittance transition detail between these areas of the building, the question is, which U-value calculation do I assign the linear transmittance to? Let's look at a simple case of a roof parapet that is a transition between a roof and a wall. Here, we'll likely have two U-value calculations for input into the energy model, one for the roof and one for the wall. We shouldn't include the full linear transmittance of the parapet in both calculations so that we avoid double accounting of the parapet heat flow. Instead, we can assign the linear transmittance to one assembly or the other. The heat flow impacts of the parapet are still fully included in the overall energy model. Choosing which assembly it is assigned to is up to you. Spandrels Spandrels within glazing systems, such as curtain wall and window wall, are part of the opaque building envelope, but the vision and spandrel systems share the same framing. In the BETB guide, a separate linear transmittance for the glazing transition has not been calculated. Instead, any thermal bridging impacts related to the interface, beyond what is considered an NFRC analysis of the visage section, is included within the spandrel thermal transmittance. For a window wall bypass where the back pan and insulation are interrupted by the concrete floor slab, the BETB guide includes an overall spandrel plus slab U value and R value for the specific size of spandrel model. This is a clear field value that includes the impacts of the bypass and deflection header, so no additional linear transmittances are needed. Alternatively, you can calculate the opaque spandrel U-value by using a combination of clear field and linear transmittances. The spandrel area is from the horizontal mullion between the vision and spandrel sections to the slab, using the slab length for the bypass linear transmittance. 
Note, the linear intransmittance includes the impact of the deflection header. Floor to ceiling glazing. Since linear transmittances are considered an additional heat flow to the clear field assembly, what do we do if there is not a clear field assembly? This happens with balconies with floor to ceiling glazing above and below, which is a common occurrence. Glazing system U values are accounted for separately in energy standards and whole building energy models, so there's not an obvious clear field above or below balconies with floor to floor glazing. These types of assemblies are highlighted in section 8 of Appendix A and B of the BETB guide. If the balcony area is included with the adjacent clear wall takeoff and a linear transmittance is used, this will likely result in double accounting of the heat flow. However, there are options for these types of assemblies. Option A, U-Value Approach. You can apply the balcony area between the full height glazing sections as its own assembly with a U-Value. This requires an area takeoff for the projected balcony slab with no linear transmittance needed. This area would include any curbs above the floor. You can find these U and R values in the BETB guide in section 8 with the subscript S. Option B, Linear Transmittance with no clear field. We can also use the linear transmittance for the slab and curb only with the length of the balcony under the glazing system. However, we would not include any of the balcony in the area takeoffs. This means that all the heat flow from the slab and the curb is contained within the linear transmittance. These special transmittances can be found in section 8 and noted when they are not associated with a clear field assembly. This concludes this series of instructional videos for the Building Envelope Thermal Bridging Guide. Thank you for watching. And for more information, please see the latest version of the guide for free on the BC Housing or BC Hydro websites.